SBC Media. Welcome to the iGaming Daily podcast, analysing the news from the betting and gaming industry all over the globe. Supported by Optimove, the number one CRM marketing solution for the iGaming market. Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the iGaming Daily podcast. Optimove, the number one CRM marketing solution for the iGaming market. 56% of the EGR Power 50 personalised player experiences with Optimove. And as a special offer, Optimove are offering new clients a free first month when they buy Optimove. For more information and to claim this first free month, go to optimove.com slash SBC. Links will also be left in the podcast episode description. So a four-day Easter break saw the global gaming sector return to news that the Canadian fintech and payment specialist and uh, a real ever-president in the US iGaming market, Nuve, has been acquired by PE Group Advent International for $6.3 billion. Today, I'm joined by Ted Menmuir of SBC News and Ted Orm Clay of Payment Expert. And we're going to discuss Nuve's takeover and the potential ramifications it could have on some of their key industry incumbents. Elsewhere, we'll also look at Italy and the ongoing organisation, or reorganisation, we should say, of that country's gambling laws, how they've hit a stumbling block with regards to federal rules and how they can be applied to autonomous provinces who demand guaranteed protections and compensation to implement changes. But first, chaps, thanks for joining me. Uh, yeah, a really uh, a, a nice long weekend. The weather was okay. How how were things with you? How did how was your Easter break, uh, Ted, from Payment Expert first? Yeah, it was good. Thank you, Joe. Um, what did I go up to? I helped some friends move into a new house and then went for a couple of drinks around the area they moved into and I went back to visit some family in Nottingham. So yeah, pretty good overall. And yeah, I just always like to say it's good to be back in the studio with Ted Memia. Um, good to get the old band back together, so to speak, you know. Nice one. And I'm sure it was a uh, a crazy weekend for whichever area you went exploring in. I, uh, uh, I'll keep them in my thoughts for that, that pure, poor community. Uh, Ted, Ted, ma'am, you're Ted of SBC. How are how are things with you? How uh, how was your Easter weekend? Any uh, any chocolate? What what did you get up to? Yeah, good. I uh, I got conned into the hype of Arsenal versus Man City. Yeah, so. dreadful, right? Dreadful. Game, game to remember. Yes. <laughs> Super Sunday. <laughs> but that's that's all forgotten because I'm I'm reuniting with my true loved one, Ted OC. <laughs> Ted, speaking of hype trains, that that uh, that match didn't live up to uh, expectation at all. It was a real damp squid. Uh, but there is a hype train I want to get your opinion on really quickly before we get into it. Are you? Because it's polarized opinion in the office. Are you for Dune one and two, or are you anti Dune one and two? Are you going to sit through six hours of this sci fi extravaganza? Um, I actually, you know, I, I saw the Dune part two last week. And no I thought, spoilers. Uh, yeah, the the good guy wins in the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I thought it was spectacular, and uh, you know, it's it's definitely a film you got to see in the cinema. Okay. But I also think that it's you know it's, it's a quite fresh take on what a blockbuster should be from Hollywood, and I it's also de- deals with like deep themes. And uh, it doesn't treat its audience like a bunch of numpties, which is good. Which I think so many kind of Hollywood franchises have done over the years. So I am, I am pro Dune, the Dune saga, as is seen by um, uh, was it Jack? I was going to say Jack Villeneuve, but that's a Formula One driver. <laughs> uh, so, uh, whatever his name is, yes, so he's done a good job. And uh, nice, nice curveball, Joe. You, you uh, throw me out my uh, my podcast brain. Uh, and Ted, I know you're Ted, payment expert. Ted, I know you're also pretty pro Dune. You've watched it uh, many times. I've heard from your from your house. Um, I mean, yeah, I've seen that. One of my housemates is is quite a big fan of it, so he's had the first one on a couple of times. Uh, I've only been to cinema to see new new one once um because yeah it's quite long and that but going there multiple times seems like quite a lot of effort but uh you know if someone's a big fan of it uh i'm, I'm not going to judge them for wanting to go and watch it a couple of times mate each their own nice so yeah there we are the the teds are united in their love of uh in the love of dune um but that's a serious business out the way let's talk about 
this acquisition from the the payments world and obviously Nuve a big player as we said within gambling as well so yeah what, what is the story on the Nuve acquisition Ted is it a surprise that uh the firm has gone private having only gone public back in 2020 you know is this a, is this a surprising move Okay, so yeah, so I think that's um, that's quite an interesting point to make, Joe. That uh, yeah, they only went public a few years ago. Uh, they're listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange and um, and the and the Nasdaq. Uh, regarding, well, uh, I guess the one thing that I guess isn't a surprise is the fact that they would be an acquisition target. Perhaps they're quite a they're a very varied company, active in a lot of different areas of payments. Um, so you know, quite active in e-commerce, but also. Uh, to relate things back to the context of what we talk about on iGaming Daily, very heavily um, active in gambling on both sides of the, of the Atlantic. They have some really big name operator clients, uh, Kindred, Entain, Flutter, DraftKings, Bet365. These are all some of the companies that have partnered with them over the years. And I, I know there's a lot more of an extensive list than that. Um, I know that they've, they've also becoming increasingly active in the US over the years and also Canada. Obviously, they're a Canadian native firm. They're based in Montreal. Um, Ontario is obviously one of the biggest markets globally at the moment, and there's a lot of speculation as to when other ones are going to open up in Canada. Obviously, if we go a bit further south, the US more than but it's now more than half, way more than half, isn't it? Of US states are open to some form of gambling, and um, as we all know, payments is a very crucial aspect of gambling, particularly online betting, uh, with the various sort of different methods and digital wallets and so on that are available for that. Um, with the US uh, betting scene continuing just to go up in value um, and more potentially more active markets on the horizon, yeah, I don't see, uh, I don't find it particularly surprising that someone out there would be interested in acquiring quite a big payments business of interest in that space. And this is also nothing new for um, Advent either, who have uh, have, have a history of investing in payments. I think they, I think Mango Pay is one of their big. Um, payments holdings at the moment uh on the other hand maybe something is a bit more surprising is there have been some indications lately that uh, on a macroeconomic level payments companies are becoming a bit less of a of a of of an interest to investors who are looking at getting involved in tech uh there's been a few different reports and uh stripes president made some comments as well to cnbc the other week that um artificial intelligence is becoming more of a bit of an investor magnet i guess when it comes to technology so uh, I guess Advent might be booking the trend a bit here with this six point three mil, uh, next six point three billion, excuse me, um, takeover. SBC Leaders connects the gambling industry's top tier operators and associations to share the best ideas, collaborate on solving the biggest issues, and push innovation throughout the betting and gaming industry. If you're an operator and want to join the discussion, visit sbcleaders.com for more information. Yeah, that's really interesting. Interesting what you what you say there about the uh, you know the state of investment in payments and fintech as well. Uh, certainly paints this one uh, in a new light and underlines just how significant it is. Um, Ted, SBC, Ted, are you uh, are you surprised from a business perspective that uh, Nuve are, are sort of happy to to go private? And um, yeah, what what implication do you think that will have on their uh, their big gambling clients that we know so well? It's a deal that all industry stakeholders should be observing just because of new base kind of payment coverage, especially across tier one operators. Um, will it have an impact? Yes, it will. And that depends on the course that Advent take it to. One of the things about payment services is that by being a service to the gambling operators, right, um, you will have a certain amount of vultures looking at the deal itself and how Nuve services its tier one operators and maybe thinking, look, uh, if they price up or if they change their operations, right, there's an opportunity or a window for them to take on kind of a major contract with a a gambling PLC. And look, as we know uh, from SBC and who who attends our conferences, you know the importance of... um, uh, key accounts, especially in the payments and, and compliance, and just how heavily targeted these provisions are. So for every new VA, there, there will be about 10 or 12 suppliers looking at that, saying, look, we can concentrate and maybe take a top account off them. Uh, I'm not sure 
whether this is a kind of a defensive or defensive move for, for Nuve, as in if they're going to go to private equity, are they going to acquire more services onto gambling? Only time will tell. Yeah, really interesting. And what, what you mentioned there, you know, I think the, the timing is, uh, you know, with it with our New York conference coming up next month, uh, the, the timing couldn't be more uh, more important, I don't think. You know, the discussions that will be had off the back of this, the, the vigilance, the, the eyes of the industry will, will be on this deal from payments firms and uh, operators, as you as you mentioned. But uh, yeah, a big, uh, pardon the pun, a big gamble, 6.3 mil- uh, billion is, uh, you know, it's a heck of a deal, a, a big gamble by Advent Group. They've obviously got some plans. They've obviously got a bit of a blueprint there. Uh, yeah, in, into the crystal ball, what do, what do you think they're going to do with Nuve? What what do you think the, uh, the, the, the motive is there? Um, I think Ted used yeah some quite good terminology really when, uh, with the end of um at the end of his his answer there you know really only time will tell it is still quite early days at the moment um the the deal's only just been confirmed today I think they've still got some um some approvals that will need to pass to get it done but it it looks like it's um obviously it looks like it's it's going to happen um sometime this year um after which point Nuve will uh, will delist from its um different stock markets listings. Um, in terms of whether it's a big gamble, obviously six point three billion, like you said, Joe, that is a huge amount of money. But it seems that Advent are very confident that they're they're acquiring a proven business with um, a really extensive reach across a lot of different sectors. Like I say, global e commerce, um, business to business um, payments, particularly in gambling, as well as embedded payments. Um, so I know I know we're focused heavily, quite heavily here on the tier one operators that the company's partnered with, and gambling is obviously a huge part of its um, its business and its revenue. But it's also, um, like we've said, a lot more varied than that. So I think they're uh, they're probably quite confident they're picking up on something that will um, get them a lot of clients and a lot of reach and a lot of different industries. Uh, regarding where they might want to go from here. Uh, I know that um, Nuve's chairman and CEO, uh, Philip Fayer, I hope I've said that right, is going to be retaining his position. So I don't know if that, that'll mean that, you know, they'll be following quite a, I don't know if that means that they'll be following a similar strategic direction to what they've been fo- uh, focusing on over the past couple of years, um, which has, as we've said, included um, a lot of betting and gaming partnerships. Uh, so really, in terms of where we go from here, um, I'm yeah, it, it, it's it, it's like you said with a crystal ball. We don't we don't have a crystal ball, so we're just going to have to wait and see, really. But I think we can expect Nuve to continue being a very big player in the gambling payment space, um, regardless. Okay, thanks for that, Ted. A, a, a good layout there. You know, even without specifics, any anything to add? Uh, SBC, Ted, on on that one. Anything uh, that that you think will be a you know a definite plan for Nuve? How how would you manage that investment? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, that's that's worth it on my paycheck too. Uh, how would I handle a six point four billion uh, acquisition? Mo- movie suggestions mm-hmm. you'll uh-huh. do, but not. Uh, yeah, not. <laughs> um, no, I mean, look. One of the things that you know we see under the um, down the service chain of gambling is that the payment um, payment companies are kind of diversifying. In what they offer, so it's not just one-to-one transactions; it's compliance, KYCs. It's offering as much of the um, as much of a solution, overseeing kind of all transactional components of gambling. And uh, it's interesting because this comes at a time where gambling technologies or gambling operators are kind of looking more inward and um, assessing kind of their technology stack and what needs to be built. And as you know, the cost of compliance and KYCs are rising across all Western markets. Uh, there's much more strain in that part of the, uh, the the system for operators. So it will be interesting to see what Nuve brings out to market and where it's kind of focused on the value chain of gambling. I mean, is it going to bring in kind of innovations that really are kind of operationally focused and... Um, cut costs for the operators which is what's needed at the, at the moment and also how the operators react 
to their services that are being brought in? Or do they just continue to go, look, we're going to look inward and try to kind of solve our solutions? Or do we go to outside parties? And I think that is kind of a big gamble for what Advent are trying to do. So again, going back to the, the deal itself, I think Advent probably looks at gambling and says, yes, as they go into new markets, especially South America, there is an opportunity there to sell kind of add-on services for Nuve. But it, it's really down to how the tier ones are now starting to kind of redevelop their their, their operating and technology stack. Okay, and, and do you think, I mean, as, as the, those, the doors maybe close up within the gambling industry, is that likely to uh, increase the allure of sort of diversifying uh, Nuve into new fields? For, for Advent as they you know they look to get the most out of their investment here you think we're going to see Nuve no longer the the player that is synonymous with uh or synonymous from our perspective anyway with uh being partnered with top tier gambling operators and they're going to move more into other fields um this you know this is the question about the, the their acquisition now look Yes, new they are big enough that they're in, in different fields, right? But what we do know about gambling, it's that it's a sector that needs its services. It's a sector that it's very kind of compliance heavy. And as in the other, the other side of this coin is that if you fail in that discipline, it's the penalties and it's the regulatory punishment, right? And that's what the operators are afraid of. Now, the question for CTOs, CEOs there is how do you develop a coherent, and internal operating systems, right, that can cater across multiple markets. That is the question for tier one operators, right? And where can can Nuve and other kind of solution providers fit in? And um, I think that there is an operational revision, and we see this in the amount of companies that are going, you know, that have announced kind of transformation programs in the last six months. And I think Nuve and Advent kind of must see an opportunity in that. But it has to come there with effective solutions, right, across multiple markets. And I just don't think that there is a kind of a one size fits all solution as there was maybe in 2018 when, when they started off on this venture. Okay. And Ted, uh, payment expert Ted, uh, fittingly for this discussion. Um, yeah. But where, where do you see the future for Nuve? Do you, do you think uh, we will see more of a diversification in their, their offering? Or, or do you think they'll uh, kind of get this foothold in gambling and, and really strengthen it? I think we can always expect Nuve to be a player in gambling. Um, but obviously, diversification is, it, 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 in, in many cases, is, is always a positive, especially when um, we were, you know, we're in such a digitized world, a digitized economy these days. There's so many different opportunities for uh, new forms of payments in, uh, across various different fields, various different forms of commerce. Uh, we, you know, we're, we're seeing uh, new technologies and new practices come to the forefront of various uh, and, uh, industries like open banking and uh, just increasing pop- uh, popularity of digital wallets across various different industries and various different markets as well. So, yeah, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see them diversify under Advent, who, as I said, have had a lot of interest in payments in the past. So they are they probably will have their own idea of their own strategy, uh, particular industries they want to target. But I feel that having built up with Nuve having built up the presence in gambling that it has done with various tier one operators and having built up quite a good reputation among them uh, for the sort of payments processes it provides, um, I think it would be it would be it wouldn't be a wise move just to 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 squander that. You know, it will always be. I think it will always be part of their focus. Um, obviously, also they're not the only company out there though. Uh, they're not the only payments firm out there targeting uh, the gambling market and building up clients. You know, you've got your Trustly's, True Layer, Octo, and so on. Uh, among various others um so uh yeah they'll, they'll, always, they'll always have their place but they'll always have some competition and uh, I, I, I can still expect to see diversification along i know that was a very vague answer but uh yeah that's that's my summary of it i think it, it, it's it's very true because so i think what ted ted here shows is that yeah look people think that the barriers to entry for payments are, are very low that could be true but the maintenance cost of keeping contracts and keeping it here, you you're keeping your main main accounts is is cutthroat. And we talk about gambling being you know an aggressive market. I think the multiple in payments is is X ten in levels of competition. It's a much much deeper pool of um, of 
competitors targeting your, your contract. A really interesting story developing with Nuve there. Uh, you know, lots of questions to be asked. Lots of questions to hopefully be answered in the future too. We will obviously keep a close tab on how it develops with the payment expert team, the SBC team, and obviously the Casino Beats team as well. And obviously the Americas team too. Lots of angles. It's going to be one that is really going to play out. And I think the um, the gaming sector will have a keen eye on how developments at Nuve do play out because they're such a key partner. And there'll also be an opportunity, I'm sure, for smaller payments firms that are, are looking at Nuve and looking at how the situation unfolds. But that's everything for today. And uh, thank you ever so much for your time. And make sure you get out and see Dune part one and two as well, because it's a fantastic film. And thank you, Ted. Thank you, Ted. I appreciate both of your time. And have a good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for listening to today's iGaming Daily podcast, supported by Optimove, the number one CRM marketing solution for the iGaming market. If you want to find out more about some of the subjects raised today, feel free to explore any of the sites in the SBC News Network or check out the latest edition of the SBC Leaders magazine. Happy reading.